Woolly and Wee Woolly. They are Woodrow Wilson's sheep. Woolly and Wee Woolly. They are the White House sheep. What is that you're humming, Woolly? It is my new favorite song, Over There. It played a lot when the Doughboys arrived in France to help fight in the Great War. Wooly, I am so proud of you that you knew that the United States soldiers were called Doughboys. I also remember that President Wilson ran for his second term in office with the slogan, He Kept Us Out of War. But then in 1917, the United States joined the Allies to defeat the Central Powers. What do you know about fighting in the trenches? I've been looking at so many photographs of the awful conditions. I have to count sheep to fall asleep because I can't get some of the photos out of my head. Speaking of sleep, it is time to count those sheep and get some sleep. I'm tired too. One sheep. Two sheep. Three sheep. <coughs> Whew, what a great sleep. Wait, 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 wait. Where am I? I must be dreaming because it seems like I'm surrounded by items from the Great War. Whoa, Wooly, what is that around your neck? When all the doughboys hear the gas alarm, this gas mask is inside this pouch and protects me from harm. Uh, what type of gas is needed for a gas mask? This war had poison gas and all soldiers needed a gas mask. It could be deadly. Oh no, here comes the rain again. I sure hope the sandbags keep the water from collecting on the duck boards. Those duck boards, which is the wood that we're walking on, sure can be covered by mud and water quickly. Grab your mess kit and start bailing. Get that water out before our feet get soaked. If I help you, I am risking my very last pair of dry socks. My other pair are in the dugout drying. These socks are so important to me. They were made by some of the wool from the shearing of the White House sheep. That wool raised over $50,000 for the Red Cross to help with the war effort. Now that I've dried out my mess kit, I'm going to get something to eat. I hope it's some hot soup. Oh boy, soup from peas, and it's green. I'm going to eat every bit of my soup and leave nothing for the rats. Rats? Wait, what are you talking about? There are thousands of rats in these trenches. They're huge, as big as cats. These rats want our food and will stop at nothing to get it. They will even take a bite out of a soldier. There's one now. Kill it. No! Those rats have lice and ticks. So what difference does that make? Those creatures can only live on something that's alive. If you kill the rat, they jump on you. Lice love a warm, dark place like the seam of your uniform. Yuck! How do you get rid of them? Very carefully, by slowly taking a lighted match over the seam to burn them out. You have to be careful so as not to put a hole in your uniform. So what do we do while we're waiting to go over the top and attack? Most importantly, we need to make sure our gun's ready to fire. Sometimes we repair holes in the sandbags. We need sandbags to absorb the rain and the, and the bullets. A few soldiers like to do trench art, which is carving on their mess kit. Uh, some like to read. What do they read? The favorite item are letters from home. Soldiers love to read about daily life like their mother and their sister getting a job to help the war effort, or their younger brother buying war stamps, and the new vocabulary for their favorite foods. Uh, what are you talking about? Well, hamburgers were now called Liberty Sandwiches, <laughs> and Frankfurters were now hot dogs. I think I'll write a letter home. I need more socks to keep my feet dry and avoid that trench foot. Maybe my family will send some chocolate chip cookies and some really chocolatey brownies. If you get something from home, will you share? You mean like the British and the Germans did on the Christmas truce of 1914? I've heard that soldiers from both sides came out of their trenches, shared food, songs, and lots of laughs before heading back into their own trench. Is your letter ready to go? Are you sending it by carrier pigeon? Wait, what are you talking about? Well, back in the Great War, sometimes the communication lines would be cut. So the U.S. Army had almost 600 carrier pigeons for communication. The average pigeon could fly about 50 miles per hour. Was this successful? Yes. This one time, 550 U.S. soldiers became trapped behind enemy lines. The U.S. started to bomb the lost battalion, as they were called, as they did not know where the soldiers were. Running low on supplies, the soldiers sent out their last carrier pigeon named Cherami. The message attached told the U.S. to stop firing. Whoa, what happened to Cherami? Cherami was hit, but she kept flying. 
Cher Ami flew over 25 miles. When the pigeon landed, her right leg was injured and she was blind in one eye. Wow, sheep and pigeons doing their part for the war effort. Were there any other animals involved in the war besides horses? Well, have you heard about Stubby the war dog? No, but I love dogs. Stubby was a stray dog that lived around the athletic stadium at Yale University in Connecticut. In the spring of 1917, soldiers were training at this facility and Stubby attached himself to a soldier named Robert Conroy. Conroy even taught Stubby to salute. What happened when Conroy had to ship out to France? Stubby followed the soldiers and hid on the train. And when it came time to board the ship to France, Stubby was wrapped in a blanket and smuggled onto the ship. Even when the ship arrived in France, Stubby became the mascot of the regiment. What did Stubby do when the soldiers were on the front lines? He assisted with guard duty, bark a warning when attack was about to happen due to his sensitive hearing, and any other task a soldier might do. Conroy was worried about Stubby in case of a gas attack, so he had a gas mask made for Stubby. Did Stubby ever get injured? Yes, he did get hit by shrapnel once. He had large pieces in his chest and leg. He also survived a gas attack. Stubby became so sensitive to the smell of poison gas after that, any whiff of gas, and Stubby would bark and wake the soldiers so all would be aware of the attack. Wow, Stubby sounds amazing. Do you know, one time, Stubby found a German spy trying to check out the Allied trench. Stubby took off after the spy and biting him in the leg. Stubby helped capture the spy as U.S. soldiers came to see what was happening. I bet the soldiers love Stubby. Did he earn any medals? He received many medals. Stubby even earned two purple hearts for his injuries. Boy, all of these animals sure did play an important part in the war effort. Yes, if we are to defeat the Germans, it will take all of us. Oh no! Don't bite me! Please don't bite me! Wooly, Wooly, wake up! You're dreaming! What? Oh wow! What a dream! I was dreaming about being in the trench. The mud, the rats, pigeons, dogs, and so much more. <laughs> what did you eat? That sure sounds like a strange dream. All I can say is, oh, I am glad to be back home. Over there, over there, send the word, send the word over there, that the Yanks are coming, the Yanks are coming. The drums rum coming everywhere.